What down, family? It's your boy, SNTV. Back at y'all with another Chirac Street Legends. And this episode is going to be about none other than Lavendale Nobles, a.k.a. General Slim. And another motherfucking thing to set the record straight. Ain't no motherfucking robbing, no no limit niggas, 150 niggas. You, boy, you got to shit somebody. And then they got to die, then you take it off their neck. You ain't, ain't nothing happening. Everybody got... Boy, there's a lot of motherfucking diamonds and shit floating through this. Look, boy, f one as you want to. I swear to God. See, in a minute, see, I'm just booting right now. In a minute, I'm finna be like with them everywhere they go. And boy, you know, I'm a security freak. Try and fuck on them chains. Goof ass niggas, I swear to God. Ooh. <laughs> Yo, sister, go be like, why are you shooting that many times? <laughs> she gonna be blue. We gonna put a gang of hoes in their bitch. Boy, you better not, boy, don't even look at us wrong. Like, I'm the one be jumping off the stage. Me. I'm a f right over. And I be having that knife on the G Slim comes from that NLMB set. They're in the alliance of Black Stones and GDs. No Limit being Stones and the Muskegon Boys being GDs. 78th and 79th in Essex and 78th in Muskegon are their main blocks. They're located over east. They're actually GDK and Die 5. They're cool with ABK, TTD, GMEBE, Drill City, and the Burley Boys. They beef with Death Row 085, MTG 079, No Good slash Outlaw City, No Limit 083 and 087, Buff City, Sircon City, Black Mob, and their main beef is with KTS, Lakeside and Pocket Town. G Slim is one of the original No Limit members that came up under guys like G Bull and G Gill, who are the co-founders of No Limit. G Slim came up when Terror Town was stoned to the bone, and there was no such thing as a renegade stone. In the early 2000s, a lot of the stone sets started getting into it. Boo from Black Mob would end up killing Vito from No Limit, and just like that, No Limit No Law was born. Then later, Black Mob would click up with Lakeside, and No Limit would click up with the Muskegon Boys, forming NLMB. Slim also had ties to Joe City through Kurt Mack, who was his right-hand man, and Melly and Wu were his nephews. Slim was well-respected and there was a lot of hoods that honored him. Slim was no joke in the streets either. He started catching cases in 1995 and would continue to do so until 2016, which was the year before he died. He had over four aliases, with charges ranging from criminal trespass to murder. He had nine felony arrests, and 13 misdemeanor arrests. Shit, he even kidnapped somebody for ransom. In November 2004, Lavendale Noble was convicted of aggravated kidnapping, aggravated unlawful restraint, and unlawful use of a weapon by a felon. He is currently serving concurrent 12 and four year sentences as a result of those convictions. Noble's 2004 conviction stemmed from his involvement in the kidnapping of Jose Rojas. The facts established at his bench trial revealed that at about 3 p.m., on July 15, 2003, several men approached Rojas at a public car wash in Chicago and stated that they intended to rob him. When Rojas told these men to take his vehicle, they instructed him to get the F back in the car. These men said that they were aware that Rojas' father had recently received a sum of money, and they told Rojas that they were going to hold him for a ransom. The assailants drove Rojas back to a lit garage and detained him for almost 15 hours. During this time, Noble and a second man beat Rojas. Noble also handcuffed Rojas to his car. In the early morning of July 16, 2003, at approximately 5 o'clock a.m., Rojas was able to free himself from the handcuffs and immediately escape from the garage. He then flagged down a police squadron and reported the crime to the police. The two officers Rojas encountered became suspicious because Rojas was frantic they had a broken handcuff hanging from his wrist. Rojas then took the officers back to the garage where he was held throughout the night. Several individuals were arrested at the scene and taken to the police station for identification. The same day, Rojas viewed a lineup and provided a positive identification of two of his kidnappers and a third man, Marvin Everett, who was also present in the garage when Rojas was being detained. Rojas also informed the police that three other men who were involved in his kidnapping were missing from the lineup. Notably, 
Noble was not in this lineup. Victim also described one of the missing accomplices as being a large, bald-headed African-American male with a tattoo of the letter J, a heart, and a P on his leg. The police, throughout the question of Marvin Everett, then identified Noble as a possible suspect. As a result of this identification, the police placed Noble's photograph in an array of six photographs. From this photographic array, Rojas identified Noble as one of his kidnappers. Like the physical lineup, the photographic identification also occurred on the same day Rojas escaped from his kidnappers. Two months later, the police called Rojas, told him they had Noble in custody and asked Rojas to stop by the police station to identify him. Rojas subsequently went to the police station, viewed the lineup, and positively identified Noble as one of the kidnappers. At Noble's bench trial, Rojas provided a positive identification of Noble in open court. He also testified that Noble was the person who sat in the backseat of his vehicle while the kidnappers transported him from the car wash to the garage. According to Rojas, Noble held a firearm against his stomach during this drive. While in the garage, Rojas claimed that Noble struck him on his cheek several times. Rojas also testified that he was able to observe Noble for a period of approximately nine hours at a distance of four feet in the lit garage. Noble was charged with five counts, aggravated kidnapping for the purpose of obtaining ransom, aggravated kidnapping while armed with a dangerous weapon, aggravated battery, aggravated unlawful restraint, and unlawful use of a weapon by a felon. He became known for putting in work and teaching younger members how to slide. He was said to have put in major work in the 90s early 2000s and he allegedly did 10 years on the body slim and kurt mack were inseparable melly called them the brain and the muscle kurt mack would end up being killed on june 27 2017 losing kurt mack was like a shot to the heart for g slim and you could tell by the things that he posted and on july 26 2017 not even a month after the death of Kurt Mack, G. Slim would end up losing his life as well. Lavendale C. Noble was killed and three other men were wounded in a shooting Sunday morning in the Southside Avalon Park neighborhood. A shooting about which the victims gave deferring accounts, police said. The men were shot at about 5.15 a.m. in the 1500 block of East 82nd Street, according to Chicago police. The 40-year-old Noble suffered gunshot wounds to the neck and right hand and a 23-year-old man was shot in the face, police and Cook County Medical Examiner's Office said. Both showed up at South Shore Hospital, where they reported being shot at 5.45 a.m. in the 7900 block of South Phillips. They were later transferred to Stroger Hospital, where Noble, a South Shore neighborhood resident known as Slim, died at 8.03 a.m. The Medical Examiner's Office said the 23-year-old's condition was not immediately known. Allegedly, No Limit got into a shootout with Black Mob and Lakeside members. After the shootout, G Slim drove to the hospital and actually carried his daughter's baby daddy, Moody, into the building. Upon arrival, the nurse noticed that G Slim was also hitting the neck. He would go into surgery and drift off to the afterlife. Even in his death, my son was a, 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 a hero because he saved Moody. Um, so at the hospital And I think that what we can learn from the story of G Slim is this. Know when to let go. Slim was 40 when he died. He had already won that dangerous street game that we play. He should have been out the way. Also, Slim's death shows us that karma always comes to pay us a visit. No matter what, she does not miss. But I can say this. Slim didn't fold in the heart of the moment. He never left his brother. In my eyes, Slim is a true legend. I notice a lot of people get upset with these CSLs. Well, y'all have y'all legends and war heroes. Let us have ours. We from Chicago, motherfucker. This has been another episode of Chirac Street Legends. It's your boy, 
SCN TV. I'm out.